In this module, we are going to get into the brief details of the Android ecosystem. What is Android? Android is a mobile operating system and was initially developed by Android Inc. In the August of 2005, Google bought Android. And in 2007, the Open Handset Alliance was formed and Android was unveiled to the public. The Open Handset Alliance is an alliance of mobile and technology companies which developed Android. It is a consortium of 84 firms to develop open standards for mob mobile devices. Let's now discuss the platform architecture that Android follows. Android is an open source Linux based software stack. The diagram on the right shows the major components of the Android platform. The Linux kernel is the foundation of the Android platform. Linux has been in widespread use for years and because of the contribution from thousands of developers, it has now become a very stable and secure kernel. The Linux kernel provides Android with several security features like a user-based permission model, process isolation, extensible mechanism for secure IPC, which stands for inter-process communication, and the ability to remove unnecessary and potentially insecure parts of the kernel. Using Linux also allows device manufacturers to develop hardware dr drivers for a well-known kernel. Next comes the hardware abstraction layer or HAL, which lets us utilize the device hardware capabilities. It has multiple library modules for specific hardware components. Uh, so you would, you would come across a camera module, a Bluetooth module. These are the things that help us interact with the mobile device. HAL defines a standard interface for hardware vendors to implement. By doing this, Android becomes agnostic about lower level driver implementations. HAL implementations are packaged into .so files and loaded by the Android system at the appropriate time. Next comes the Android runtime, also known as the ART, which is a managed runtime. And on Android, it is used by applications and some system services. For devices running Android version 5.0 or higher, each app runs in its own process and with its own instance of the Android runtime. Prior to the Android version 5.0, Dalvik was the Android runtime. So if your app runs well on ART, then it should work on Dalvik as well, but the reverse may not be true. ART is written to run multiple virtual machines on low memory devices by executing DEX files which is a bytecode format designed specifically for Android and which is optimized for minimal memory footprint. ART also has some major features like ahead of time compilation, optimized garbage collection, better debugging support. Uh, it provides better debugging support by including a dedicated sampling profiler, detailed diagnostic exceptions and crash reporting. It also provides the ability to set specific watch points to monitor specific fields. Another important part of the Android platform are the native C and C++ libraries. Many core Android system components and services such as the ART and HAL are built from native code that requires native libraries written in C and C++. The Java framework APIs provide a wrapper over these native libraries to be used while developing Android apps. If you're developing an app that requires C or C++ code, you can use the Android native development kit also known as the Android NDK to access some of these native platform libraries directly from your Java code. Next comes the Java API framework. The Java APIs provide you with the entire feature set of the Android OS. These APIs form the building blocks you need to create Android apps by simplifying the reuse of core modular system components and services. The Java APIs include a view system which can be used to build the UI. These include lists, grids, text boxes, buttons, etc. It also includes a resource manager, which provides access to non-code resources such as localized strings, graphics, and layout files. We'll see this more in action when we're developing the app. It also provides a notification manager that enables all apps to display custom alerts in the status bar. These are normal notifications that you receive on your mobile phone from different apps. An activity manager that manages the life cycle of apps and provides a common navigation backstack. This is more in the lines of when you navigate through different activities or different views on a mobile app and when you click the hardware or the back button provided by the app you pop back to the previous page 
This is also handled by the Java API framework. Content providers that enable apps to access data from other apps, such as contacts or to share their own data. What are system apps? System apps are basically those apps that come pre-installed on your phone when you just buy them. These are apps for functionalities like email, SMS, phone call, camera, etc. System apps have no core status. This means that a user can choose any third-party app to replace the functionality of a system app. For example, you can have a third-party default SMS messenger app. The settings app is an exception to this. System app functionalities can be used by developers in their own apps. This means that if you're developing an app that involves a feature of image capture or video capture, you can leverage the functionality of the camera app. Let's talk Android fundamentals next. The Android SDK tools compile your code along with any data and resource files into an APK, which is an Android package. An APK is an archive file with a .apk suffix. One APK file contains all the contents of an Android app and it is the file that Android Power devices use to install the app. You must have come across the term application sandbox. This is a very common term among mobile apps. What it means is that every Android app lives in its own security sandbox. And every app runs in isolation from the rest of the device and the apps in the device. Each app is given permission to access only the files that it needs and nothing else. This happens due to key Android security features. Like the fact that the Android operating system is a multi-user Linux system in which each app is a different user. By default, the system assigns every app a unique Linux user ID. And this is only known by the system and unknown to the app. The system then sets permissions for all the files in an app so that only the user ID assigned to that app can access these files. Furthermore, each process has its own virtual machine. So an app's code runs in complete isolation for the, from other apps. By default, every app runs in its own Linux process. The Android system starts the process when any of the app's components are needed and then shuts it down when it's no longer needed or when it has to clear some memory or recover some memory for some other apps. The Android system implements the principle of least privilege. This is part of the application sandbox feature wherein Every app can only access the component it requires. This ensures security because no app can have unauthorized access to any parts of the system. In case different apps wants, want to share data, they can share the same Linux user ID, in which case they can share each other's files. Apps with the same Linux user ID that are signed with the same certificate can also run the same Linux process and share the same VM. An app can also request permission to access device data such as the user's contacts, SMSs, uh, images, gallery images, etc. The user has to explicitly grant these permissions. With this, we come to the end of this module. We have gotten a brief understanding of the Android platform and how it has come about. And we've also spoken uh, in brief about the Android fundamentals. We've spoken about things like application sandbox, the APK file, the principle of least privilege, and how different apps can share files and data amongst each other. In the coming module, we're going to start building an Android application.